For a number of reasons which we detail in our staff manual, we've chosen to use single rope technique for our main climbing lines. In this technique, one ties off one end of the rope and climbs on the other. However, in an institutional setting, we want to be sure that we can put students rapidly back down on the ground if they become exhausted, scared, or attacked by insects. The simplest way to accomplish this is to have the whole climbing line be lowerable. On the face of it, that seems to mean that we need a rope three times the height of the tree we're climbing. One length to go up, one length to go back down to the anchor, and one length of slack left over for the lowering. That's pretty inconvenient when we have 30 meter trees and uh, the ropes that we're borrowing from our rock climbing friends are only 60 meters long. Fortunately, we can use a trick to get around this limitation. Turns out that we only need a length of rope twice the height of the tree if we tie both ends of the rope together in a continuous loop. We call that loop the full circle rig. Let's watch again as Sarah climbs. She's ascending one end of the rope, the other end goes over a branch, back down, it's tied to itself and also tied to the base of the tree with a special releasable hitch. If at any point Sarah becomes scared or exhausted or uh, attacked by wildlife, the ground operator can reach up to the full circle rig and undo it. Just above Mark's hands here you can see the two ends of the rope tied together. He is untying overhand back up, untying uh, a mule knot, it's essentially a slip knot around the rope, and lowering Sarah to the ground using a munter hitch. Just below the munter hitch you can see the anchor attached to the tree. First let's consider what that ground anchor looks like. On a large tree like this we'll use a 40 foot length of static line wrapped around the base of the tree as many times as we can go around. We'll bring the ends together and tie them with a double figure eight on a bite. We use a double figure eight on a bite in preference to two single figure eights on a bite because eventually we're going to attach carabiners to this loop. A single attachment point avoids issues of cross-loading on the carabiners. When the anchor is pulled tight, the wraps cinch down on the tree and they won't run up the base. When we attach carabiners, we do so with their gates opposite and opposed. For smaller trees, we carry a 20-foot length of 1-inch tubular webbing, and we wrap it up the same way. To tie our rope in a loop, we use a knot called the Flemish Bend. Uh, this Flemish Bend is very similar to a figure eight follow through, except that you're using two ends of the rope rather than one end, weave back upon itself. So long as you have a few inches of slack coming out of either side, that's not necessary to tie overhand stopper knots or backup knots. When we tie the full circle rig, it's very important to remember to put this knot just above the ground anchor. To make a lowerable connection to our ground anchor, we use a series of knots common in rope rescue. We start with a munter hitch on the ground anchor, tie that off with a mule knot, and then back it up with an overhand on a bite. A couple caveats in tying the system together. Make sure you pull on the Flemish bend side to orient the munter hitch in the correct direction. And also be careful when you're tying the mule knot. There are a couple ways to do this. Um, there's one good way and one not so good way. Uh, the not so good way is not very stable and will uh, have a tendency to fall apart. This is the correct way here. For extra security, make sure that this slip knot doesn't come untied. You should tie uh, an overhand back up. Once we've tied this overhand back up, we take a locking carabiner and clip the loop of the overhand back to the main line. The munter hitch mule nut, overhand, and the Flemish bend.